Chapter 5. Self-discipline, or its lack thereof, is contagious. Ross Hammond conducted a review of research on the role of social influence in the obesity epidemic. His findings confirm that social influence is a significant factor in obesity. In other words, our friends and family can infect us with obesity. If they can make us prone to gaining weight, they surely can influence other areas of our lives too. Motivational speaker Jim Rohn once famously said that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. Although his saying wasn't based on any scientific proof, it's hard to argue with him. Family and friends influence all aspects of our lives. We copy their sayings, behaviors, habits, and opinions. Self-discipline isn't different. If all your friends spend hours in front of the television and their muscles haven't experienced any real exercise for years, it's likely you're similar to them. If they have problems with obesity, chances are you have them too, and have a habit of eating out at fast food joints together. If you want to introduce more self-discipline in your life, consider surrounding yourself with the energy conducive to a positive change. It doesn't mean you have to drop all your friends, though. While your friends and family have a huge influence over who you are, you can use books and the internet to surround yourself with a different kind of energy. For example, none of my friends is particularly crazy about exercise. In fact, I'm the only person who's been religiously going to the gym three times a week for a long time. The habits of my friends might have influenced me, but they didn't. It happened for a simple reason. I surround myself with a lot of success-oriented people through various online forums and groups. Although I don't know any of these people better than my close friends, the mindset of these online friends is contagious and motivates me to strive for more. The challenges other people set for themselves and share online inspire me to work on my own self-discipline and push my boundaries too. I'm sure that if it wasn't for the internet, I would have had a much harder time resisting the temptation to do things the easy, comfortable way that leads to instant gratification, but little beyond it. I have a childhood friend who started hanging out with less than ambitious individuals. A couple of months later, his everyday life was pretty much the copy of the lives of these people, playing computer games, hanging out in the neighborhood doing nothing, and consuming unhealthy substances on a daily basis. Only when he cut ties with these people a couple years later did his life advance. He got back on track to make positive changes in his life, and his self-discipline improved so much that he was able to get rid of most of the bad habits contracted from these people. As they say, who keeps company with the wolves will learn to howl. Have quality friends. The 80-20 principle mentioned in the first chapter can be applied to our relationships too. 20% of your friends bring 80% of the social enjoyment. If you think about your social network, you can surely pinpoint in a few seconds who gives you the greatest joy. If you're reading this book, it's probably people who share your growth-oriented mindset. On the other side of the spectrum are the people who have a negative influence on your life. Oftentimes, you don't even like these individuals that much, but you keep meeting with them out of a bad habit. You know who I'm talking about. People who constantly complain. People who blame others for everything. People who criticize you for trying to reach your goals. If you'd like to become more self-disciplined, reduce the amount of time you spend with people who lack discipline. Their behavior, even if you don't condone it, can easily affect you. To give you a simple example, if you see a huge portion of french fries on your friend's plate, it might make you think you're doing quite well with your new diet. It can tempt you to make an exception and grab some fast food too, to your friend's joy and to your detriment. On the other hand, if you hang out with people whose habits you'd like to introduce in your life, they will make it easier to achieve this goal. If all of your friends attend a gym, it's much easier to form a similar habit. Have a self-discipline role model. Some people are lucky to have a mentor in their lives. Others have to find their own role model, usually through books. In both cases, though, you can have a person whose habits and qualities you'd like to have. 
For instance, one of my role models is Richard Koch, British multimillionaire famous for his books about the 80-20 principle. Every time I'm tempted to complicate my life and focus on volume instead of quality, I remind myself of what he would do. He's just one of my mentors who, unknowingly, helps me stick to my resolutions and keep traveling the path leading to the destination I set for myself. Who is your self-discipline role model? Whose values, habits, and qualities would you like to possess? It doesn't have to be anyone famous. Your family members can be great role models too. Now, what would this person do when tempted to break her resolution? What would she say if she saw you eating that chocolate bar instead of sticking to your new eating habits? Have a self-disciplined partner. If you're trying to form a new habit one of your friends also wants to introduce into her life, partner up with her to keep each other motivated and accountable. Your self-discipline, combined with the self-discipline of your friend, will result in a synergic effect that will keep you going even during days when you'd like to give in. Ignore haters. Every time you set out to accomplish something in your life, you'll use your self-discipline to help you say no to instant gratification and keep the big picture in your head. Unfortunately, with accomplishments come haters, people who dislike you because they're jealous of your success. These individuals don't even have to be some anonymous people from the internet. It might as well be a member of your own family or one of your friends. Instead of making it blatantly obvious, they may hide their contempt with jests. While tempting to respond to these people, it's a good self-discipline exercise to focus on your goals and pay no attention to such distractions. The time and energy you would spend trying to straighten haters out, not gonna happen, is better spent on bettering yourself. I like to say there's always something good in everything bad that happens to us. Haters are no different. I use the disbelief or jealousy of other people as motivation to stick to my long-term goals. To give you an example, if someone would tell you with viciousness you're looking today like you looked a couple of months ago, despite your regular workouts, you could use it as fuel for your workouts. You could strive to prove this person wrong, but not with the intention of shoving it in her face. Quite the contrary, you would find the joy in accomplishing your goals despite others. Like they say, the best revenge is living well. If there's anybody in your life who's driving you crazy with her nasty remarks, channel your energy toward your goals. As an additional exercise, you'll learn how to resist the temptation to argue with someone. Nothing good ever comes out of arguing. Let's recap self-discipline, or its lack thereof, is contagious. People around you can affect your self-discipline. If you hang around people who exhibit negative habits, you're more likely to develop them in yourself. If you spend time with growth-oriented people, you're more likely to grow along with them. Find a self-discipline role model or get a self-discipline partner. Each time you're tempted to give in, remind yourself of how disappointed your role model or partner would be if she saw you losing to your urges. Ignore people who'd like you to fail because it would prove they are failures. If it gets you going, use their negative energy to motivate yourself to achieve your goal.